So you're running your business, your division, your department, your team. You're good at this. You know how to succeed. You knocked it out of the park and you're enjoying it. And then one day what happens is you look up and it just feels like you're not moving the needle so much. It almost feels like when you put the, your foot on the gas pedal, the car isn't going forward the way it used to. What's happening is that your organization is moving into a stage that I call treadmill, where the systems and processes that stood you in such good stead, that brought you to the point of success that you're now at, are beginning to stifle entrepreneurship. Les McEwen has over 25 years of global business experience, offering the blueprint every business leader needs to move forward, regardless of industry, size, and market conditions. He is the author of Predictable Success, a playbook that offers a doable, intuitive framework that anyone, anywhere can adopt to move forward. From his experience with organizations as varied as Pizza Hut to Harvard University, from the U.S. Army to Microsoft, from Fortune 100 companies to the mom and pop next door, Les McEwen guides you through the exact steps to take to restore equilibrium to your organization, reignite confidence in your own management skills, and lead your team forward to the next stage in growth. Your org chart has got to be a machine for decision making. I mean, after all, what's business all about? It comes down to one thing repeatedly making good decisions and effectively implementing them. That's, that's what success in business is. Making good decisions and effectively implementing them. And if your org chart isn't a machine for decision making, if it doesn't take information in, process it effectively and efficiently, and deliver high quality decisions that you can readily implement, then your organization is going to become more bureaucratic. It is going to become more arthritic. Managers aren't trained necessarily at the outset to manage laterally, to work as peers, to work as colleagues. In fact, most managers develop a proprietorial sense that what they're doing vertically with their team is what's most important and any demands from over here, any need to service another part of the organization over there is merely a distraction from making sure that their team does the best that they can do. It's vitally important when you hit Whitewater that you train and teach and model to your managers that there are no brownie points for managing vertically. That's just taken for granted. That's why they're there. But what you expect and want from them is that they learn to also manage laterally. They learn to link arms. They learn to make decisions effectively together. They learn to pass the baton from one to another. Whenever you've got a large organization, one that has known success for quite some time, and I don't care whether it's a company or a division within that company or a department, a group or a team, when you've known success for some time, one of the things that happens is we begin to become over dependent on the factors that delivered success in the past. What we do is we assume that if doing X, Y and Z gave us success last year, then doing another version of X, Y and Z will deliver success for us this year. And I want to challenge you to think about something. I want you to think about the sum total of all you need to know in your organization to be successful next year. Think about all of the granular data that you need to have to guarantee success next year. And here's the reality. Most of us operate within a very thin slice of all of that necessary information. We operate inside what we know we know. Now, where you're sitting right now, there are some things that you know you know. Maybe you know you know about sales, or marketing, or engineering, or R&D. And it's very likely 
that the first place you go to in trying to build success for next year is in that slice of what you know you know. And what we get challenged by, by our colleagues and by the climate out there and by changes in the economic environment and a hundred other things is to get to understand more about the stuff that we know we don't know. Now you'd think that if you're funding your young business from your credit cards and from Uncle Joe's 401k that you've shaken free, that you'd have a bigger struggle in your hands than say, a startup that's got $20 million from a venture capital fund? Well, you're both in exactly the same boat, believe it or not. One of the things that the dot-com era showed us is that it doesn't matter how much money you pour into a startup, they still face exactly the same challenge. Can you get to a viable market for your products or services before the money runs out? If your folks are adhering relentlessly and ruthlessly to policies, sure you're going to get consistency, but you're not going to get growth. You'll get maintenance at best and then you'll begin to see your business get creaky and old and bureaucratic. What you have to do is begin to reintroduce vision. You've got to reintroduce the concept of adding value, taking initiative. When it comes to finding a path to growth or figuring out how to stay there once you've found it, no one has the depth of understanding, the breadth of experience, or the empowering ability to communicate the immutable principles of success that Les McEwen brings to every event, be it a keynote or an intimate address.